prepare to tackle this tricky question designed not just to test your mental math abilities, but also to improve your critical thinking skills. You're presented with the circle, which is broken down into eight equal parts. Each part has a number, and the numbers are 14, 28, 42, 56, 41, 82, 24, and then comes the missing number. You need to determine the missing number and select it out of four possible choices. Choice A, 21. Choice B, 57. Choice C, 65. And last but not least, choice D, 96. Tricky question, don't you think so? But believe it or not, there is a logic in these numbers. At least this is what I found. And since I did find my answer, I'm thrilled to compare it with your solution. Let's continue so we can examine your strategies step by step. And if your brilliant approach is better or more efficient, don't hesitate to let us know in comments. Remember I told you that this question is tricky. Let's look in details why the answer is not obvious. Let's look at the numbers 14, 28, 42, and 56. As you can see, they all increase by 14. 14 plus 14 equals 28. 28 plus 14 equals 42. And 42 plus 14 equals 56. But then this pattern breaks, and you see numbers 41, 82, and 24. Unfortunately, this pattern is misleading, and it's there to confuse you. In this case, the random numbers could have been used as well. So what is the right solution? Take a look at the circle in the middle. If you draw the line from the number through the middle of the circle, the numbers on the opposite side of the circle are reflections of the numbers on the other side. Let's take a close look. For example, 14 becomes 41, 28 becomes 82, 42 becomes 24, and 56 then becomes 65. So the correct answer here is choice C, 65. Here's a captivating word constructing assessment test question that challenges your thinking and also equips you with the cognitive and memory recall skills applicable in everyday situations. You need to construct the word based on the existing word present, and the existing word is financial. The word that you need to construct consists of seven letters, and some of the letters are visible. Letters are A, A, and C. Take a close look to see if you can construct the word. Are you ready? I think I found my version of the answer, and I'm looking forward to share with you problem-solving strategies on how to solve these types of challenges. Let's dive into the solution together. And obviously, if you have your own unique ideas, please share them in comments for everyone's benefit. Well, in case you're still thinking, let me give you a hint. The word represents the state of equilibrium in financial affairs, where income matches and exceeds expenses, resulting in a stable and sustainable financial situation. And the word is balance, financial balance. Let me spell it for you. The letters are B-A-L-A-N-C-E. Financial balance involves management of earnings and expenditures to prevent difficult and excessive surpluses, ensuring financial health and security. Achieving financial balance is a fundamental goal for individuals and organizations to meet their financial obligations and build a solid financial foundation for the future to help in avoiding financial stress and instability. I enjoy solving pattern questions because they're so easy to understand, but sometimes not so easy to solve. We're presented with the sequence of numbers, and we need to find the missing number, which is the next in the sequence. The numbers are 25, 20, 16, 13, 11, and then comes the missing number. You need to calculate the missing number out of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Choice A is 8. Choice B is 10, choice C is 7, and choice D is 9. Take a close look to see if you can do the calculations and come up with the solution for the missing number. It looks confusing, isn't it? But believe me, there is a hope at the end of the tunnel. And I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Here we have a concept of decrement. And the pattern is that the next number is calculated as previous number minus decrement. And decrement increases by 1 with each number in the sequence. Let's take a close look. Our first number in the sequence is 25. 
and our first initial decrement is minus 5. 25 minus 5 equals 20, and this is how we come to the second number. Then we decrease decrement by 1, and the decrement becomes minus 4. 20 minus 4 equals 16. 16 minus 3 equals 13. 13 minus 2 equals 11, and 11 minus 1 equals 10. So the correct answer here is choice B, 10. Was your answer different? Please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments then, so we can all learn. And now, let's put your knowledge to test with the question I have for you. Take a moment to work through this independently, and don't forget to share your answer in the comments below. I'll be there to provide my feedback. You need to determine the missing number. You're presented with the sequence. The numbers in the sequence are 1, 3, 7, 15, and then comes the missing number you need to calculate and select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 29, choice B, 31, choice C, 33, and last but not least, choice D, 35. I am confident in your problem-solving abilities, and I encourage you to tackle this question independently. Afterward, don't forget to share your answer in comments. I'm looking forward to providing you with the feedback. Thanks for taking part, and best of luck. I love this question because it is used very frequently to test your analytical skills and business math skills. You're presented with three expressions. The first expression is candy multiplied by sun equals 15. Second expression is candy plus 4 equals 9. And third and last expression is 12 equals sun multiplied by question mark. And you need to find this question mark and select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 2. Choice B, 3, choice C, 4, and choice D, 5. Take a close look, maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. Are you ready? I think you might benefit from a quick hint, and my hint to you would be, take a look at the middle expression. Are you ready now? Let's move forward, and I'll share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. This set of expressions looks unsolvable. But in reality, if we start with the middle expression, we can actually solve it. Let me demonstrate. Let's start with the expression candy plus 4 equals 9. Believe it or not, but we can actually calculate it. Candy would be equal 9 minus 4, and we can calculate the value for candy, which would be equal to 5. Now, knowing the value of candy, let's focus on the top expression. Candy plus sun equals 15. We know that the value of candy is 5, and when we substitute candy, it would be equal 5 multiplied by sun equals 15. So the calculated value for the sun would be 3. And now we can focus on the last expression. 12 equals sun multiplied by question mark. We know that the value of sun is 3, and we can substitute it, and the new expression will be 12 equals 3 multiplied by question mark. Question mark can be calculated by 12 divided by 3. So the end result would be answer C, 4. If you came up with the different answer, please post your answer and solution in comments. Here's a very interesting question, which might make you think, but hopefully you will get it very quickly. If five people can sew five shirts in five minutes, how long will it take for 100 people to sew 100 shirts? You're presented with four different choices. Choice A, 500 minutes. Choice B, 100 minutes. Choice C, 5 minutes. And last but not least, choice D, 60 minutes. Take a close look, maybe pause this video to see if you can get to the right answer. And on my end, I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Here's the trick. If five people can sew five shirts in five minutes, we can say that one person can sew a shirt in five minutes. Now, if 100 people work together, their combined productivity will be 100 that of a one person. Because we can scale up so easily in this production, it will take 100 people 5 minutes to sew 100 shirts. So the correct answer here is choice C, 5 minutes. Did you get to the same answer? If you didn't, please make sure to share your answer and rationale in comments. 
Here is an interesting cognitive abilities test question to see how well you can deal with abstract concepts. You are presented with three expressions. In each expression, there are shapes and numbers. The first expression is triangle plus triangle equals 6. The second expression is circle plus circle plus circle equals 12. And the third expression is where you have triangle plus circle and you need to calculate the end result of this calculation. Once calculated, you need to select the answer out of four possible choices. Choice A, 5. Choice B, 7. Choice C, 9. And last but not least, choice D, 11. Take a close look to see if you can complete the calculations. Are you ready? Let me share with you my version of the answer here. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. I mentioned abstract reasoning concepts because you need to associate each shape with the number. For example, in the first expression, we have one triangle plus second triangle equals six. Both triangles are the same, which means that the one triangle's number can be calculated and associated with number three. We can do similar math with the circles. Three circles equal 12, which means that one circle would be equal to four. So triangle equals three, circle equals to four, and triangle plus circle would be equal to 7. So the correct answer here is choice B, 7. Did you get to the same answer? If not, please make sure to post your answer and rationale in comments. What's interesting about the question I'm about to present you is that it truly tests your analytical skills. You need to determine which number comes next in the sequence. And you're presented with the sequence of six numbers where seventh number is missing. The sequence is 23, 11, 20, 12, 18, 14, and then comes the missing number, which you need to select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 17, choice B, 16, choice C, 22, and last but not least, choice D, 20. Take a close look, maybe do mental math calculations to see if you can come up with the answer. Seems unsolvable, isn't it? But be sure that the answer will look so simple as soon as I reveal it, just like in the magic trick. Maybe give yourself additional 15 to 20 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Are you ready? Because on my end, I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. If you are a frequent visitor or a subscriber to this channel, you know the rule. And rule is to find the pattern. But in this particular question, there are two independent patterns. Let's look closely so I can share them with you. The numbers 23, 20, 18, and 17 represent first pattern. And the next number is calculated by subtracting decrementing number from the previous number. Let's look at the example. 23 minus 3 equals 20. 20 minus 2 equals 18. You see that the 3 is decremented by 1 to get to 2. The next number is calculated as 18 minus 1, which is decrement from 2, equals 17. The even numbers, 11, 12, 14, and then the missing number, are calculated using the different pattern. In fact, the opposite pattern, where instead of decrement, we use increment. Let's look at the examples. 11 plus 1 equals 12. Then we increase 1 by additional number, and we increment 12 by 2, which leads us to result of 14. Then the next number, the missing number, is calculated as 14 plus 3, which would be equal to 17. So the correct answer here is choice A, 17. Did you get to the same answer? If not, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. I love this question because it tests your spatial reasoning. And if you try to solve it on your own, it boosts your IQ and intelligence. You're presented with unusually looking shape, which have some measurements, and you need to calculate the perimeter of the given shape and select it out of four possible choices. Choice A, 6 feet. Choice B, 10 feet. Choice C, 12 feet. And last but not least, choice D, 14 feet. Take a close look to see if you can calculate the answer. I am pretty sure if you are a subscriber to this channel and practice these types of problems regularly, you'll do it easily. On my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better solution, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. 
As you might be well aware, to calculate the perimeter, you need to add up the length of all the sides. In our object, we are presented with the steps that have measurements. And this object also has a solid sides at the bottom and on the left. So first, let's calculate the perimeter of the steps. The top sides are all one feet, and the heights of every step is also one feet. So the steps would be calculated one feet plus one feet, plus one feet plus one feet, and then you do it six times because it has six sides, which means that the perimeter of all the steps would be six feet. The bottom area, based on the measurements, would be three feet, and the left area would be three feet as well. So the total perimeter would be six feet for the steps, then three for the bottom, and we also need to add three feet for the left area, which would total to 12 feet. So the correct answer here is choice C, 12 feet. Did you get to the same answer? If not, please make sure to post your solution and rationale in comments. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you for helping us to become one of the largest YouTube channels to help people become smarter, increase your IQ, and to pass any test. If the content of this video was helpful, please make sure to click the like button to help YouTube algorithm promote this video and help other people to find it faster. Giving us a like is also a way for you to tell us that you need more content like this, and when you tell us, we will deliver it for you in the future. For links to free and premium resources, please check the description and comments of this video. You can also go directly to our website, howtoanalyzedata.net, to download the materials related to this topic. I really appreciate your endorsement, support, and patronage of this channel. And thank you for considering to become a member and considering to subscribe. Please leave feedback, suggestions, or corrections in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.